the New York governor's race from both sides of the aisle. The point starts right now. We're here to talk about the race for the state house with Democrat David Patterson, the former governor of New York, and Republican Bruce Blakeman, the Nassau County Executive. So let's get right to it. There are two polls that were out this week. The Siena poll has Governor Hochul up by 15, but an internal poll that was done by the Zeldin campaign has him uh, inching up. He's only about six points out. Which is the right poll? Well, I believe the internal poll because. He uses the same pollster that I used, John McLaughlin, and John told me about four weeks out when I was running last year that I was about five points behind and that basically the Siena poll said that I was 16 points behind. So that was a 10-point spread. So I think the spread is probably about 10 points. The Siena poll typically oversamples Democrats and undersamples Republicans. And if you look at the data, that's exactly what they did. They're oversampling the turnout of Democrats. They're not going to come out in those numbers. I haven't seen any Democrats that are energized this year. But yet the Democrats have a huge, a huge um, um, edge in terms of voters. So is it wrong to oversample, oversample the the Democrats. Well, it's based on science on what who would typically come out on an off year election. And basically, they undersampled the Republicans when they typically come out. They oversampled the Democrats. And I think it was done intentionally by Siena because I think they did it intentionally to me to frustrate my fundraising. So I, I don't believe the Siena poll. Governor Patterson, your opinion. Well, a lot of times when there's oversampling in polls, it actually has the reverse effect. It makes the people who are supporting the person who's ahead think that they've got it in the bag, and many of them then don't go out to vote. So I, I think somewhere between 6 and 15, I'd say the governor probably has a 9 to 10 point lead. But I think the election, as are many elections, is going to be decided in the last two or three weeks. And my advice, if I was giving it to either of the candidates, is no fringe benefits. In other words, Governor Hochul has got to stay away from this notion that she is being controlled by the leftist assembly and uh, senate and their leadership and with uh, Zeldin um, there's this perception that he is uh, very far right that he supported uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, notion that the election was stolen and that that's too fringe right now I think voters are not thinking about these ideological principles as much as they're thinking about the problems with inflation, the problems with uh, crime, and obviously um, the issues related to uh, their own communities and their own needs. So you're saying both of the candidates have to come into the middle and forget the, their um, more extreme positions? Right. And it's the reason that both of the candidates have exposed what they would feel are each other's frailties in those situations. With Governor Hochul, I think, making a better point because some of the allegations against uh, 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 Congressman Zeldin are actually true. So what, here's the $64,000 question. Can Lee Zeldin close the gap? I think Lee Zeldin will be elected governor on Election Day. I'm very confident of that. Every Democrat that I talk to, common sense Democrats, not lunatic left wing, like I believe she is captain, by the left wing of her party. Uh, not a common sense Democrat like Governor Patterson, who I admire very much. <laughs> but when you look at crime, it's out of control. There's a crime pandemic now in New York State. If you are, if you are going out to dinner tonight, or you're going to a parent-teacher conference, and you come home, and your home is burglarized, that criminal gets out without having to post jail. A judge has no discretion. The other thing is, Democrats like to talk about gun violence. Here's a fact. Under the law, right now, that Kathy Hochul supported, a criminal who was caught outside of a store or outside of your home with an illegal gun is out, on, on, is out without bail. 
It's mm -hmm. cashless bail. A judge has no discretion. So if you're serious about gun violence, how can you let somebody out who has possession of an illegal gun and tell them that they can go scot-free? Governor Patterson, you agree? Can, can, do you think that Lee Zeldin can really close the gap, given the edge that Democrats have in, in voter registration? I think that uh, County Executive Blakeman has this point of view because he himself overcame, uh, as he said, a large uh, deficit in the polls and won for county executive last year. So I can understand how he thinks that because he did it, that Congressman Zeldin can do it. The difference is, uh, Bruce, you know, we've known each other a long time. I never was frightened by the fact that you became county executive. I didn't vote for you, I didn't support you. But, you know, as a friend of yours, I didn't think that there'd be a problem. With Zeldin, you really don't know where he's coming from with these comments that he's had to make about what he feels was a fabricated election last year. The election last year wasn't settled in one state as it was with Al Gore, who went through the challenges, and the Florida Supreme Court uh, upheld his challenge only to be overruled by the United States Supreme Court in a highly politicized process. But what uh, Gore did was he went and stood up as the vice president and he counted the ballots which were against him and that elected uh, George W. Bush as president in 2000. That is not um, what this situation is. This is a sore loser, President Trump, who said that if he lost, the only way he could lose is if there was cheating. Then when he does lose, they don't produce any evidence, and even Rush Limbaugh in the last weeks of his life said, I think the election was stolen, but there's no proof of it, and if there's no proof of it, it's not good. And so well, that kind of personality running the state of New York actually frightens me, although I've met uh, 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 Zeldin when he was in the assembly, and I thought he was a decent person, but like I said, the fear that arises from some of the things that he's doing are unnerving. Mr. Blake. Well, it's... <laughs> Governor Patterson is sticking with the Democratic playbook, which is talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not on the ballot. What's on the ballot this year is crime, which is out of control, congestion pricing, which is bizarre, and also inflation. And those are things where Lee Zeldin can make a tremendous impact in a positive way. Governor Hochul doesn't want to talk about these issues because she's on the wrong side of those issues. She wants to talk about Donald Trump. That's ancient history. But they're playing by a playbook where let's just talk about Trump, not talk about crime, not talk about the things that people really care about, and that's safety in their communities and the price at the gas pump. So we're going to actually talk about these issues. But before I do, I have to ask you this question. You know, a lot of people are wondering whether or not this election could be a replay of the 1994 election when Mario Cuomo faced off against George Pataki. At that time, Mario Cuomo was ahead in the polls going into the election, and yet George Pataki pulled it out. Governor Patterson, could this be a replay or yes or no? I, I mean, think uh, it would be a replay if the candidate was someone like George Pataki, who again, he had uh, the Republican principles, lower taxes for business, it creates more jobs. And you know, what the Republican philosophy was, George Pataki was not coming from this extreme position. And I uh, said one thing about Donald Trump, what I'm, I'm not worried about Donald Trump as much as I'm worried about people listening to him. That's what my worry is. But what I would say is that I think crime is a, a, a huge issue in this election. And the issue of bail reform, I think, has been contorted in this election because bail does not relate to the crime that the individual who's accused committed. It relates to making sure that the defendant appears at the trial. So in order to do that, uh, what we've done uh, traditionally is that we have asked them to pay cash for the bail, but when people who pay cash for their bail are three times more likely to get a favorable outcome because they are trying their case outside of jail, whereas the ones on the inside inevitably take pleas and wind up with criminal records. Judges in the past have had the discretion as to whether or not an individual who is accused of committing a crime is a danger to society or a flight risk. 
That discretion has been completely taken away. So you can commit burglary after burglary after burglary. You can carry an illegal gun and get caught 10 times, and a judge has no discretion. Bail was set so that someone, if they were a danger to the community, which most of these people are, they would set bail. In this case, they're scot-free, they get out, they can commit crime after crime, and we're seeing it. The crime statistics show that recidivism is way up. But so Mr. County Executive, the judge's discretion was not taken away by the bail reform bill in 2018. It was taken away in 1971 by the assembly whose speaker was the Republican Perry Durier. The state Senate majority leader was Earl Bridges, both of them Republicans, and the man who signed the bill was Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who also was a Republican. So I, my friend I don't is a great he, history he, he, professor. Yes, he's but I don't know to the wall with today. Republicans. It's here. not relevant to today, but it's how we got here. And what the county executive is trying to do is to blame that on the Democrats when uh, it's clear that. Uh, judges probably, New York is the only state out of 50 states that uh, has this situation. The others give judges discretion in terms of the dangerousness of a potential defendant getting out on bail. And I think it should be changed. And I think Governor Hochul thinks it could be changed. But she put her 10-point plan out on crime, which I think most people would have liked, and the legislature rejected it. Now, they're telling her to go bring them back in the middle of an election and get humiliated because she can't do it again. No governor, Republican or Democrat, or from another planet would ever do that. Not right. even to save lives? It doesn't save lives because... It they, does save lives because we are seeing right now a pandemic in New York of crime. Every community is seeing it. We're seeing it in Nassau County, certainly in New York City. Look, a, a lieutenant in the fire department, a medic, was stabbed to death the other day. It's out of control. People have no regard for law. Well, you know, we've talked about um, crime. We've talked about the connection to Trump. What about the issue of abortion? It's one of the issues that um, Governor Hochul has raised against Lee Zeldin, saying that it, it's important to have New York be a state that allows people to get abortions here. Well, Lee Zeldin has said time and time again that he would not uh, exclude a woman with her right to get an abortion for rape, incest, or... Um, if it was the mother's life was at risk, which is a very common sense approach. There are people who are pro-choice, there are people who are pro-life. I happen to believe that it's a woman's right to choose, although personally I'm against abortion, but I believe in the first trimester that it is a woman's right. Republicans and Democrats can disagree on that issue, but the fact of the matter is he's being portrayed as someone who he's, who's, he's definitely not. He has said time and time again he would do nothing to change the abortion laws. And although he continues to say it, Governor Hochul continues to run ads that completely fabricate his position. Governor, Governor Patterson? Well, I think, unfortunately, there are times when he sort of said both. And I think that's what's creating a problem for him in this situation. It makes him hard to refute the commercials that the governor is making against him. But what I would say is that um, it's a very critical issue to a lot of uh, women, and a lot of those women are Republicans. So if, if County Executive uh, Blakeman is right, he needs to really uh, emphasize that point more than he has to this, to this point. Okay, we're going to have to leave it right there, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming network, CBS News New York. We'll be right back.